As I look into the horizon, I relax and smile away as the message comes my way. Look, I'm a born in a million, a portal to me, pick up, and pass Teja kweli ni baraka Kutoa pesa ni haraka With a pesa you do more, more my new panel. So allow me at this juncture to introduce you to Nzioka Waita, who is in the middle of our panel. He's the Director of Corporate Affairs at Safaricom, the Kenyan telecommunications giant who were the global pioneers of mobile money with M-Pesa and the advert that you've just seen. John Chietti. John Chietti is in light blue and uh, wearing glasses. John is the lead at MLab East Africa, a startup incubator that identifies and nurtures sustainable enterprises. He's a great exponent of mobile entrepreneurship and writes a regular blog called gmeltdown.com. Mwana Ali is the founder and managing partner of the Savannah Fund a venture capital fund focusing on African tech companies. Mwana is going to start this conversation. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to kind of start with a story. Um, about a year ago at uh, the Pivot East, uh, I showed up you know, from Tanzania um, and saw a great show of entrepreneurs. And from, from that day, um, I basically spent the last year uh, trying to solve a problem that I saw at Pivot, at Pivot East, which was a funding gap for entrepreneurs. Um, so that's where my background comes from. I pounded the pavement. I talked about M-Pesa in Silicon Valley like it was, you know, mana from heaven. This is the <laughs> best thing ever to Africa. We can monetize applications. Uh, at the same time, I also talked about the M-Lab, about the great work John and the iHub have been doing about, you know, creating an incubation space for entrepreneurs. Uh, and together with those two things, I was able to come up with Savannah Fund and get some initial capital to fund entrepreneurs. So I'd like to, you know, um, start with maybe you and Njoka, right? Yep. Um, on uh, what do you see the role of M-Pesa in powering entrepreneurship uh, in East Africa, starting with Kenya, and now, of course, it's, I'm from Tanzania, I've seen M-Pesa in Tanzania as well, and it's now starting to grow. M-Pesa, um, the story behind M-Pesa is, uh, is intriguing at, at the minimum. I mean, whichever way you cut it, there's a story that whether Six years ago, when you wanted to send money up country and you get into a very complex negotiation with your bus company and uh, put your money in an envelope and pray that it gets to the final destination. Um, that is one story. Another story is mom and dad at home retired, waiting for their pension, which is delayed. You recently employed, working, conscious of your responsibilities back home, figuring out how do I keep these guys, how do I support them. That's two. Three is I'm running a kiosk, nothing to do, just have my usual FMCGs on the shelf. What do I do with them? What kind of business is there for me? And then enter M-Pesa. You know, I always tell guys, M-Pesa is not about the technology. The technology has been surpassed um, in many instances, there's many people out there investing billions of dollars in R&D, trying to better the technology. Techno 
emphasize about the ecosystem that has been created. The vendors, the enterprise, putting money into the hands of little sub-agents, a guy who's running his pharmacy, he's got his little Mpesa till on the side making a bit of cash, the young developer looking to cash in on an app and figuring out how am I going to get paid for it. Yeah. You know, this is the sort of ecosystem that Mpesa has created and that we want to continue growing. Yeah. So, so John, this is a great cue for you. Um, you know, given that it's an ecosystem, Mpesa is one of the most powerful ecosystems you can actually imagine for entrepreneurs to monetize their applications and, you know, um, what do you, what do you see as uh, the challenges, opportunities for you know, the entrepreneurs you incubate at the MLab to take advantage of M-Pesa and you know, you know, grow the ecosystem? Because uh, we've heard of M-Pesa being a, a great financial you know, sort of inclusion tool. It's, you know, I, I always say that the impact investors and donors wish they owned M-Pesa given how much they're trying to uh, uh, capitalize on the, on the sort of social enterprise part of it. You know what, I, I can't agree more with um, Nzioka that uh, when, this, when it says that Mpesa's success is really not about the technology, it's more about the ecosystem. Even in any other area that, of innovation that you're looking at, uh, granted we actually, uh, at MLab we actually tired of hearing about this Mpesa story being the only success story. It's, it's, it's becoming almost cliche. But when you look at other sectors of our economy, when you look at um, agriculture that we just talked about with, with innovations like ICAO and uh, MFAM and others in, in the agriculture sector, in, um, in health, there's guys like MedAfrica and many others, you really see that uh, the opportunity is really around, um, it's really a mobile re revolution that um, we need to, uh, entrepreneurs need to em embrace and actually uh, look at our, um, our society and the typical problems that we have in, in health, in, uh, in agriculture, in education, in, in business and see uh, what better things we could do, especially if we, if we take advantage of uh, the knowledge and skills that our people have and the platform that the telcos are creating for us with a with good example that M-Pesa has created for us. And, and then we, we can, we'll, we'll get convinced that actually we can get uptake for innovations that we come up with, especially if we, if we have support from the ecosystem, especially if, if we have people like, people like Safaricom and uh, Samsung and other, other players in the mobile ecosystem supporting the entrepreneurs coming up, then we're going to have an, an, an better, an bigger, better story than even M-Pesa if, if we look at some of the unique problems that we have in Africa. Okay, I'll stick to you again, John. Um, because you asked me last week to come and speak at the, uh, at the M Lab to your current cohort, I think, and some others, um, uh, to talk about Africa tech value and how should startups be valued. It was actually a kind of a, a big topic for the IHAB community. Um, and I, get, I came over and spent a good hour and a half talking about how entrepreneurs should uh, think about their ventures as far as funding and uh, valuations. Um, is that one of, you know, that is clearly one of the challenges for entrepreneurs that are coming out of these labs. Uh, can you think of any other ones as far as, obviously, you do great work with training them on mobile applications, uh, but uh, what other gaps do you see, you know, um, that they need to uh, fulfill too? One of the challenges that, that we are seeing that actually uh, we need to address all of us together as an ecosystem is the, the, the observation that um, everyone wants to become a developer and uh, they have some skills. And when they grow beyond that, they want to be, be an entrepreneur and start their own uh, kiosk, their jokali ar around the applications that they develop. But that then very quickly we get into this trap of uh, uh, being content with the, with the success of a small SME around, what, what, around the business that, that we are creating. And then um, just like any other SME around, with, uh, it doesn't grow, it doesn't create jobs. It's just the founders and the, and the owners that they become nice and rich and start being big, big, big cars, but they don't see beyond um, uh, the, uh, the, po the immediate potential of the, of the products that, they, that they're creating. And one of the things that we want to encourage entrepreneurs is to think beyond the immediate solutions and, and the immediate money that they get. And whatever solutions that they're coming up with in their, in their innovation and inter entrepreneurship effort, let them think beyond, uh, let them think about a scale and uh, being able to uh, grow those applications to a level whereby they can actually employ like 10,000 people and, uh, as, as, as large enterprises, and that's what really we're, we're trying to nurture. We're not trying to nurture um, entrepreneurs that will just employ uh, five, five to 10 people in the, in, the, in, okay. the, in the next 10 years. So talking about scale, Joke, I think this is a great topic for Safaricom. You know, I'm sure you get thousands of entrepreneurs banging at your door saying, I want to distribute my app on Safaricom. And uh, myself, I've seen a few great uh, companies, for example, Boonie Media, 
uh, I got the SMS to watch the videos. And you know, given that Safari Club ha is still in a feature phone world, and you know, we're not yet at the app stores kind of level where everyone has a smartphone, you can go by, you know, distribution can be by the app stores. How do you manage or uh, how do you judge on you know, entrepreneurs when they come to you with ideas for, and looking for a Safari Club to distribute their apps? Okay, this is something we've confronted and had a, had a serious challenge with because one of the accusations that we've always had to fight is being killers of innovation. Um, if you talk to the developer community, one of the concerns they had was, we don't want Safaricom in this discussion because we feel intimidated, we think they're going to come here and squeeze the creativity out of the people. And we took a very different approach um, over the last couple of years, which was to take a step back and see what can we do to enhance the work that's being done by the incubation facilities, the M Labs, the iHubs, the iLab Africa, and see what role we can play, first of all, in growing the developer community. Number two, mobile operators are very aware of a changing dynamics in, in our space. Um, voice as your bread and butter continues to lose value by the day. So you're moving more towards the reliance on data. Data has inherent costs. Um, if all my data is being pulled through from Google and from sites in America and in Europe, I pay a lot of money for that traffic. So I have to find a way to leverage my broadband technology and generate my traffic domestically. And domestic traffic is about two things, about local caching, storage, peering capacity, and also, more importantly, local content that's hosted locally. So we have to play a part in incubating um, the guys who create this content. All the R&D will not come from Safaricom, irrespective of how much money we throw at it. Real creativity sits in the community, and we just need to harness that creativity, put it out to our platform. Feature phones are disappearing by the day. You are now in sub-$100 territory for broadband devices, 3G devices. So you may not have super smartphones, but you have smart enough phones that are creeping into the market and bandwidth hungry, good for revenue, but more importantly, good experience to the customer. So we see an opportunity here to get developers onto our app store, which by the way, will be launching uh, tail end of October. And this app store is really Kenya centric. It's to get local apps up to the top of the our app store, give them full visibility to our mobile users. It's not really targeted at competing with the big players out there in the market. Is it self-service, uh, or do you do any filtering of that? We do filtering. Users? We'll see what gets big hits, what's popular, makes it up to the top, and what's premium, what's light, what's beta version, starts gravitating somewhere around there. We, want, we like gaming. We're hoping for a lot of gaming, because we've seen that's probably popular here. Yeah, I think and the winner. Gaming is our key word for the next half. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No more gaming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.